married, but oh, okay. uh, most of us are single, still winging it. Okay, I feel that. Would you want to know your mate's past sexual history? Hmm. Um, yes and no, I guess. I don't know, I feel like it's important just to figure out like where they are currently versus where they were in the past, just to know like their story a little bit better. Especially if they are a Christian, you wanna know like what God has brought them out of and stuff like that. I feel like that's an important part of someone's testimony, I guess. Um, I mean, it all depends, like, <laughs> I feel like I may feel some type of way if like my partner had had like 300 sexual <laughs> partners in the past like I'd be like oh my gosh really? okay, that's too much what? I don't know it's just like ugh. I don't know I feel like I mean at least personally I feel like when you have sex with someone you're kind of like your soul is sort of like tied to them so the fact that you have like all these people that you're attached to it's kind of like disconcerting a little bit, but I'm not really one to judge, so I don't know. I feel like I would want to know. Okay. Short answer. <laughs> what about you? I'll say no personally. Um, I'm just going off of if they're like celibate, abstinent, and like committed to Christ. Um, we're like new creations. So I feel like, I mean, certain people, they had like the analogy, if you had like, sex with one person a hundred times committed but then you had like casual sex with a hundred people time a hundred people one time what's the difference so i think like comparison wise um i would like lessen her i'll just be like uh you had all these partners i don't want to do that so i think like the the bliss of not knowing is like eh, we're both in christ <laughs> we love each other like me knowing that ain't gonna make a difference that's a good answer I didn't hey Winston here still Christian still single turned 28 this year still a virgin does my wife have to be a virgin if I am let's get into the show Hey, thanks for watching the blessing report so we're just gonna get right into the material because I actually get this um, question uh, fairly often because my like 20 something single Christian male um, and virgin video was like the first um, video to like go viral and do really well on my channel and so people usually ask me hey it is, is it a big deal that your wife is a virgin or is it not a big deal and she cannot be a virgin um, also so I'm going to answer it roundaboutly but I do want to bring up this is like a big deal to a lot of people because you may or may not be a virgin yourself um, and um, the, I guess people are just projecting their worries on me it's like hey just be a big deal it's a big deal to me and so I just want to outline um, some cultural things and themes when it comes to young people in short when it comes to the Christian faith in short I'm just gonna lay it out there I'm not gonna be graphic but I'm gonna be pretty blunt I think that um, people in their minds don't want leftovers all right and so women are like oh I don't want men that just uh, got like kids I don't want leftovers or whatever or um, guys would be like I don't want a woman with a high body count I don't want leftovers and so people don't like to put this put it in this language uh, I think we like to fluff up pride and arrogance and sin um, but I think it is a real thing um, that people are concerned about but I just want to say that our lists are so dumb they are so prideful they are so demonic and arrogant because God uses like anybody in anything and so um, with that if you have so many stipulations if you have so many limitations on what you can and cannot handle and what you will or will not have I think that's not the kingdom because if you see how God uses people you be like oh um, people don't like lepers I love lepers boom bring you in Oh, <laughs> you're short and um, you're prideful and you're a tax collector, boom. 
the Lord uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So why do we discount people when legitimately that goes against scripture? And the scripture we're really going to harp on today is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All those who are in Christ Jesus are a new creation. The old has passed away. So what does that mean? Like legit, it means like, hey, if you are born again legitimately, then um, there should be no concern. And I, I do want to say this. I think we have in this generation, especially young people, early 20s to we'll just say late 30s or whatever. I think we have a lot of perverts <laughs> in this generation, male and female. And what I mean by pervert, pervert means to distort something from its original intent, right? So why are we bringing up people's sexual history while dating? We're not even engaged. We're not even knowing if the Lord has put us together because a lot of times lust, infatuation, um, actually puts us together and just our eyes things are pleasing to our flesh and so we have actually perverted courtship or dating um, how we pick a spouse by idolatry in short I need you to please me and I need you to be pure and perfect and holy because I'm the catch I'm 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 the prize do you see how perverted your self-identity is by discounting others and so in short people say oh i don't want leftover i'm using the word leftovers because people don't we like to pretty our sin make it as um, cute as possible, but not nah, you're you're actually being pretty rude um, with people um, by doing that um, You're just being like ah no, nah, if I'm a virgin, I want someone that's a virgin I need somebody pure or I don't I just need like you only been with like one person because um, You have puffed yourself up and that comes from first Corinthians 4 it talks about hey or I also want to go into Romans 14 and 4 it talks about hey don't judge another man's servant if they fall or if they stand it's the Lord that places them there so if someone is chosen by God they're born again they're a true believer what right do you have that their actions in their past before they met you has disqualified them from being a qualified spouse right so isn't I know it's not Bible but a lot of people like to say doesn't God call he doesn't um, qualify the call I don't know how the little dumb saying goes it says <laughs> he doesn't use qualified people he calls people and then they become qualified and so um, in short, um, I also want to address um, things on the other side when it comes to being a virgin and um, a poverty mindset and a scarcity mindset while dating and courting. And especially with women, just because by the numbers, and I just also want to bring up numbers. <laughs> How many people you are discounting if they're not a virgin? At the end of high school, I think 18% of Americans are virgins, all right? So you are going to knock out of people, 80% of people are not good enough to be used by God. You see how ridiculous that sounds? But in the church setting, I know it's a little hard with that um, because 80 to 90%, and I'm sticking to my numbers because the people who try to question my numbers. Uh, <laughs> But 80 to 90 percent of the total church body is female. Okay, so you need to understand this, right? So it's pretty hard. We're you're using hard as a relative term to find a spouse. But um, here's the thing: you can't allow a lack mentality or a poverty mentality to choose your uh, <laughs> choose your destiny choose your spouse uh, my apostle my pastor at my church he said don't let demons disciple you or don't let demons make decisions for you so a fear of oh I'm getting older fear of oh I can't have kids fear there's not enough um, men in the church will actually make you date down and I'm not talking about quality of person but date down spiritually right a man is supposed to be a leader of his household and so with that you should actually submit up um, don't submit down we don't do missionary dating we don't date to convert people but when you have a poverty mentality that there's not enough 
when you have a lack mentality of um, there's not enough that <coughs> That sin of unbelief, um, that begins to disciple you to begin to lower godliness, okay? But also on the same um, part when it comes to being a virgin or whatever, especially um, with men, what we encounter is we'll say condemnation on other people's sides and i i can't i can't account for that <laughs> i can't handle your perception of me and your past so what um i'll just say because i'm a man what women will say it would be like hey we can't be together because i don't want to ruin you and this is other men's stories i don't really think i ran into that but people tell me this right um they feel lesser than right but that's back to the scripture second corinthians 5 17 Anybody that's in Christ is a new creation, right? Old things have passed away. So how are you going to ruin me if your past doesn't even exist? If I'm a virgin, you're a virgin, um, essentially in the eyes of God. The only thing that could be happening is that you know yourself. And from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so what's happening is that you're not living in holiness and purity in action. You know who you are. <laughs> we all stumble and fall and um, we have to be accountable for that. But um, in reality, um, you are not right with the Lord. All right. And so this is more problematic. And this is where you actually should not date um, to marriage or courtship with a person who is not um, actively living in celibacy, abstinence, purity, or whatever, because you do not have a reverential fear of the Lord. It's like, hey, you sin, whatever, you can sin against man, but when you sin, you are sinning against God. And so if you don't have that type of true conviction um, in yourself, that's more problematic and that's more likely to be missionary dating than anything else. And so, um, I think if that's not the case and you're genuinely uh, feeling lesser than, that's condemnation. And um, that verse says like, hey, um, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation. So there's there seems to be like a sin hierarchy or a person hierarchy of who's worthy and who's not. And all of it is just so pride and arrogance and all puffed up, right? It's, it's so demonic in nature because um, the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He is destroying marriage by making people believe they're not worthy for marriage or puff them up to be like, oh, this person is not good enough to be married. But um, I think the big thing I want to go to is Hebrews 11 about how God chooses people. And this is also in Joshua 2 about Rahab, the prostitute. God, don't have all these stipulations and limitations of God would not do that. What I have been learning is that we have to humble ourselves. God will do that. <laughs> he made Hosea marry a prostitute. Uh, he used a prostitute to be the bloodline lineage of Jesus and her faith. Like she is written in the Bible. Are you written in the Bible? Prideful behind? <laughs> no, I don't think so. And so I want to tie this up with a nice little bow on top of, hey, um, I'm a virgin. It's not a big deal if my wife is a virgin, um, but uh, she does have to be um, practicing currently purity, abstinence, holiness, and be in right standing um, with the Lord. And uh, make sure the big lesson for today is to not go into relationship choosing what you want versus ch uh, allowing the Lord to choose what you need, okay? And so if you get a virgin and she has no prayer life, what is that to you? <laughs> What's that to the kingdom? God will do whatever will yield glory in him. Uh, <laughs> will use your little clay behind, your little dust, your little fleeting sand, a vapor of a life, to glorify himself in anybody. So if they are converted and they are a new creation, born again, baptized, speaking in tongues, I'm not saying that justifies <laughs> conversion or whatever, but you know what I mean, um, then they are good enough for you. Um, so 
um, pray the Lord would tell you who your wife or your husband is um, <laughs> and just be led of the spirit in all of your actions your lists are pretty dumb um, <laughs> but um, understand my sediment when I was saying hey sin is sin if you sin and sleep with one person for 10 years this person's out here in the world sleeping with a hundred people you are sinning against God so um, make sure you're in right standing with him because um, Jesus is coming back um, to judge the world granting to us either eternal life or eternal damnation and so with that um, his death burial and resurrection is a gift unto us grace we are saved through grace we are um, by faith we are saved by grace or oh, through faith whoever grace by faith uh, and so um we're finished true creations in christ jesus so my wife who doesn't need to be a virgin she just needs to be christian born again and have the holy spirit and that's good enough to me and um yeah make sure to like comment subscribe new videos every wednesday and sunday 7 p.m um share this to the virgins and non-virgins so we're less prideful and we're not being used by the devil but glorifying the lord in our life and how we choose people because all are worthy and we are christ's righteousness